one. Hey everyone. So today I'd like to go over how to set up a probe, a uh, touch probe with the G0704. And in order to do this, I will be using a software uh, add-on for Mach 3 called Probe It. And it is free to use uh, the basic version. Uh, but if you do want to buy the upgraded version, it does allow you to export, you know, more than eight data points, I believe, as of right now. But I'm going to just show you how I calibrated it and we can check repeatability. Uh, I've already done this test once and got down to 0 0.0011 repeatability, but let's try it one more time. So, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first off is you're going to most likely need a concentric way, um, also a known bearing of some sort. So I'm just using a bearing that came off the machine that I know is uh, perfectly circular and a known dimension. And then what I'm going to do is run this indicator, which reads, you know, down to 0 0.0005. And we're going to go from there. So in order to do this, I'm going to turn the speed pretty low and hold this. And you can see right here, that's the tightest I can get it to becoming concentric. So as of right now, the spindle shaft is concentric with the part and I've run it up and down on the Z axis just to confirm that the part is actually centered and squared on the uh, clamp. And yeah, so hopefully you can kind of see that. We are good to go. So next is we will go ahead and swap out this with the touch probe that I have over here for the machine and we will go to the calibration. All right, so went ahead and swapped out to the touch probe. Uh, one thing you do want to note is if your touch probe is actually set up and hooked up correctly, you will see a blue light when the touch probe is uh, coming in contact. I'll leave a link to the video description down below for, you know, all the parts that I used and where I found this touch probe. Um, company is a great company out of the United States. So, you know, customer service has been amazing with it. Uh, they've been very helpful. They are an eBay seller, um, but... I actually ordered the wrong tip. They called me, said, hey, are you sure you wanted this one? Because you asked for a replacement. Um, and it was it was awesome that, you know, they, they got right in touch with me and made sure that I was completely satisfied. So highly recommend, uh, you know, that seller on eBay. Great company to work with. So moving over here, this is the Probe It software. Uh, it is a add-on. Uh, when you do load it up for the first time, we'll go ahead and back out of here. When you do load it up for the first time, it is within the wizards and pick wizard. And we'll scroll on down here to probe it and click run. And then it pops up. So like I said before, if your probe's not working, you know, and the blue light's not on, uh, this is what happens when you do flip the probe. Uh, it does tell you that it's active. So that's another fail safe just to make sure that your software is reading it. Uh, again, it's just two wires. It's a black and white. So you just hook it up on one of your inputs and set it to active high or active low, whatever polarity, you know, the system seeing on it. So we will go ahead and go to the probing menu. Uh, actually, we'll, my apologies, we'll go to set up and calibrate. So we did just make sure that it is lined up in the machine. I'll go ahead here real quick and drop the Z-axis so the probe is within the center of it. about right. 
So now the probe is actually in the uh, center of the circle and what we'll do is we'll touch probe it and calibrate it from there. So in order to do that, there's two different options that you can do with the probe it software. Uh, one is if you know your, your probe is 100% concentric, the tip is already pre-adjusted. Um, and then in our case, we're actually looking at option two where we went ahead and made the ring concentric and then put in our touch probe and then we'll calibrate it off of that. Uh, one thing to note is I did make some marks uh, on the TTS style tool holder uh, to the spindle itself so I can get some type of uh, reliability or repeatability uh, for the probe itself uh, by swapping it back and forth. Um, probably I'll, I'll put in probably in a, you know, engrave like a, a notch or something so the, the permanent marker doesn't just wear off over time. So it's as simple as that. Once you've Cal, you know, once you've got the center adjusted, you go ahead here to calibrate probe option two. Uh, it will, you know, basically it gives you a couple warnings before it's going to say tip correction already on existing calibration and offsets will be cleared and overwritten. Uh, this is it since I've already calibrated it before, but we'll go ahead and do that again. Click OK. And then it basically says this calibration routine is for probes that don't have uh, the ball centered to the probe or shank or spindle. Uh, so you must manually center it uh, before you proceed, which we already did. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then one last warning, are you sure you did it? <laughs> which in this case we did. So click OK. And now the machine is going to run through a series of probe touches. And basically, we'll come back when this is all complete. This takes roughly about, I would say, about five minutes or so. And it's going to just, you know, run through and then do a complete, you know, probe check on all the radiuses and make sure that everything is working. So I'll come right back once this is all complete. And one thing to note is... Once it's done the X and Y check, it does tell you, hey, we are going to continue. Are you okay with it? So just make sure you hit okay. And then now it's going to, like I said, run through all of these angle degrees and figure out a probe offset. So while this is running real quick, I just want to explain a couple of parameters that you do have to set before you, you know, get to this phase. Um, you do need to set your initial feed, um, your slow feeds, uh, any type of max distance that you believe, you know, for the probe to travel before it says, oh, I found an issue. Um, and then your slow clear, how far back do you want it to travel before it travels again? And then any type of XY clearance. Um, there is another thing within the settings, uh, but the, the software itself will warn you and let you know, hey, I can't perform this function until you define some item. So like the average probe diameter, it's going to ask you for something. Uh, and then as well as your ID of your ring gauge or in this case, my bearing that I'm using. So just something to keep in mind. It, the software is very user friendly, especially if you just read the instruction manual that comes with it. But just something to keep in mind. Uh, it will ask for some parameters before, you know, it does anything else. So, all right. Well, it's uh, still chugging along. Been about a minute or so in and we are almost complete. All right, so calibration did complete. Uh, for option two, it just does a single pass around the circle. Uh, it should be noted option one does do two passes and then averages it. Uh, and that's because it's just doing its thing. I guess that's how the programmer wanted it. Um, so one thing to kind of note here is it's basically going to tell you the corrected dimensions, you know, based upon your ID and where it's located with the DRO. So it's going to repopulate if you notice this uh, value was 0 
0.109. Now it's 0 0.111. Um, we're going to hit OK here. And our ultimate offset for the x-axis, which is about 0 0.023. And our y offset has 0, which means the y-axis is actually pretty much true. It's our x-axis. And I, I have a feeling that 0 0.23 um, is actually backlash, uh, which I've been trying to correct within mock itself. So probably another video altogether on backlash and how to adjust it and correct it. But let's go ahead and we will run a quick uh, center. So I want to go here and hit save probe tip. Um, we're just going to call it three millimeters. Let's say V2 just for this case and click OK. Now it's saved so we can always open up the other one. We'll go back to the probing menu. We'll say basic XY and basic XY will get you you know any type of offsets that you're looking for if you're looking for the upper left corner, bottom left corner, you know, or in this case a center of a circle. So we'll go ahead and click go find me the center of the circle. And it's going to run a quick XYZ on this. So this runs pretty quickly. And we'll give it a hot second. And we'll go check to make sure that the peak width and peak height are uh, adequate per the ring that we're measuring. So we come back over here, and it looks like the machine still has a little bit of variability in it. It says 1.375 for the peak width, and our y-axis is 1.377. So again, two, what is that, one hundredths, um, or ten thousandths, I guess you would call it, <laughs> um, off, and... That's perfectly fine for this type of machine and setup. I, I can't expect this machine to get any more reliable than, you know, that type of measurement. So what I'm going to do now is, since I know that the um, machine is zeroed off, um, there is a zero mode, um, which is off. But if you actually click that on, what it will do at the end is make sure your working coordinates are all zeroed to that specific spot. Um, Z surface values, um, you can actually, you know, probe for Z, uh, especially with the touch probe. Um, for this case, it's not going to help me yet until I get, you know, any more TTS style holders where I can, you know, set the Z height and then find the Z height of each tool and define it within mock. So that's, you know, for another day. But let's go ahead and swap out the probe back to the you know indicator and let's check to see how you know reliable the touch probe was in finding the center all right so went ahead set it back up into the machine uh it's already kind of looking promising because it's still in the same mark that we had set before but let's go ahead and click start and actually see the total run out So, you know, I would call that a success. It's, uh, you know, half a hundred thousandths off. And you can see the needle is just bouncing slightly. But it is, you know, that is completely adequate for this machine. So I'm quite pleased and happy that this was a great success. If you like this type of video and want to see more of these, you know, style videos, please, you know, hit the comment button down below and, and let me know if there's something in particular that you'd want to see with this type of setup, you know, uh, please feel free to message me and we'll try to make a video for you. So again, I just want to say thank you guys for watching and have a great day.